Hey everyone, so we took our trash, cleaned out our garage yesterday, and we ended up having a nice little burn pile. We're gonna take this potash and we're gonna put it into our greenhouse in the next few months. Just so you have a few metrics if you are trying to create some of your own potash, every quart of firewood will leave you with roughly about 20 pounds of potash. On another video talking about the Fox Farm line, I talk about what Fox Farm has to do to keep all of their minerals suspended. In potash, is mostly composed of calcium, potassium, phosphorus, and magnesium. So just keep that in mind. You have a synthetic fertilizer versus something that that has already been used by plants to grow and you're reusing it for your plants to grow. In the same video, I talk about how the company uses chelating agents to keep iron and zinc suspended. Well, in potash, you're also gonna find trace elements of iron, sodium, and zinc. Because we're creating potash through the process of combusting plant material, potash is gonna hold many elements that support natural plant growth and has long been used by gardeners and farmers worldwide and will be here long past this whole experiment of using synthetic fertilizers for the last 50 to 60 years. You can use potash to neutralize acidic soil because it is alkaline. Although remember, if you are growing with microbiology, your microbiology actually has the power to change the pH around the root system. So just keep those small factors in mind. Potash is just gonna be used to create an environment for your microbiology to exist without stress. It isn't going to be used to neutralize it. It's going Going to be used to assist the microbiology. Anyone that is growing acidic loving crops like blueberries or peppers, you might not want to use as much potash. If you are someone that likes to take measurements and measure things, you're always going to be looking for a pH between 6 and 7, just to keep it easy. Anything below 6 is too acidic and anything above 7.5 is really too alkaline. When your soil is too acidic, it begins to shut down the microbiology from taking in nitrogen, phosphorus, or potassium. Calcium. Wooden ash is 70% calcium carbonate, so it can be used as a substitute for lime. As a general rule, you don't want to exceed about 25 pounds of wood ash per 1,000 square feet of soil. Remember to use potash in your compost bins because if you allow it to break down a little further, it's, it will release more potassium, which will help your flower development. Remember, once again, potash is extremely alkaline, so you want to use this in moderation. And you want to use about one to two cups of potash per six inches of compost in a large trash can size compost bin. Just like making a compost tea, you can also make an ash tea, which will actually help with potassium deficiencies. Brown spots, curling leaves, and yellowing veins between the leaves. Slower plant growth and a reducing yield is all because of potassium deficiencies. In another video, we'll show you actually how to make your own ash tea. Another use for potash is actually fertilizing your lawn. All you do is just cast it over your lawn, water it in, and watch your yellow spots in your grass come back to life. Last but not least, potash can actually be used to melt ice and snow. So instead of using salt, which could actually hurt your growth around your house, use potash, cast it around, and save yourself from many falls. Potash has so many great uses, and, and we've gotten away from producing all of our own goods from our house, and we don't have the knowledge and awarenesses we used to have because we've gotten used to just going to the store, buying a bag, and giving our power away. Because of regulations for safety and more people and populations growth, you can't just obviously start a fire and make your own potash, although still having these awarenesses are absolutely important. Hey guys, what do you think of that experience all the way through from cleaning up our garage to now we are at a point where we broke down this trash and now turning into food uh, for the plants that will then turn it into food for ourselves. Funnish. Although cleaning the garage was kind of boring. <laughs> that was kind of boring, but burning was pretty boring. Uh, are you excited to take this potash and put it back into the garden and see what uh, harvest we get this year? Sure. Okay. All right, guys, have a beautiful day. Get uh, Let's get planted and don't forget about it. Don't just go back to work because we are being encouraged to go back to work right at the time where we need to be planting our seeds. So make sure to do this, teach your kids. So if you do have to go back to work, the process continues because we're, the rest of the school year will be off. So we'll, we're gonna roll right into the summer and have the kids. So if you have to go back to work, at least they know how to manage the garden, which is something obviously you would normally do. 
but now it is something you can pass on that knowledge and information to the kids because that's that's the most important thing. Have a great day, guys. And Starla? Please like this video, subscribe, and watch more of his videos. Thank and you. And share. Love you.